Okay, in this video we're going to start the uh, validate function. So a user enters in some information, uh, we press calculate, and I want the function to validate to make sure that all the information the user enters is correct. Now, for a loan amount, the user has to enter in a float that's greater than zero. The number of months we want to be an integer greater than zero. The annual interest rate I want to be a float greater than zero and then the extra monthly payment I want to have a float greater than I guess greater than zero. So the conditions we use to check for the loan amount we also use for the annual interest rate and the monthly payment. So however I validate loan amounts I use the same thing for the interest rate and extra monthly payment. Now the number of months we have to check to be an integer which is going to be a little bit different but overall should be hopefully pretty straightforward. Uh, so let's get started with that now. Okay, so I called the function validate, and it does not take in any any uh, parameters. So we'll just say function validate. Okay, so we got to grab the information the user enters, and so that's going to be what do we call it um, loan amount, the months the interest rate and the extra monthly payment. And the way we grab that information from the HTML would be document dot loan form dot loan amount dot value. That grabs the the value that's stored in the form under the, the name loan amount. We're gonna do that for the number of months. Take the value stored under months do that for the interest rate and do that for the extra monthly payment. Remember if a user doesn't change the extra monthly payment the default should be zero so this value should take on zero. Okay so far so good now I have the four pieces of information now the user could have ent could have left something blank and which means the the variable loan amount for example could just equal nothing um, or can equal a letter another word or can equal any sort of number so the I don't want to say this the let's go with the logic behind the validation should go like this I'm going to say if if the loan amount is incorrect what I want you to do is I want the HTML to alert me to you know please enter a valid loan amount okay else if the number of months the user enters in is incorrect I want you to tell me so alert me say something like please enter a valid number of months else if because again it once once one of these is wrong or once one of these is incorrect what I want it to do is I want it to come in here tell me something's wrong and then I want it to escape uh, tell the user please fix this and then they'll enter in something again validate it and you know move on to the next thing number of months then they'll move on to the interest rate so if the interest rate is incorrect tell me so alert please enter a valid interest rate else else if the extra payment is incorrect again tell me so please enter a valid extra payment and if so what happens is if the loan amount is incorrect, it's going to come in here and tell me so, and then it's going to skip all this stuff because it's already gone in one of the ifs. If the loan amount is correct, it will check the number of months. If that's incorrect, it will come in here, and then it'll, I'll have some more logic that gets me out of here and tells the user, you know, please fix the number of months, and so on. Now, if it gets through all of these ifs without any problem, then I, what, what I want to do is I want to say else, and I'm going to call the function calculate. 
All right, so at this point, if it can get to this else statement, then all the data has been verified, or I'll say validated. So before, because I haven't written this function yet, calculate, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to call this, uh, I'll alert validation complete. So if I can get this message, it means all the information I entered in is correct. Okay. So what would have to happen so the loan amount is incorrect? All right, so this is what we're going to do. The loan amount had to be a float greater than zero. So we're going to go into this if statement saying something is wrong if the loan amount is greater than or equal to zero. Okay, so if it's, if, wow, well, sorry. If the loan amount is less than or equal to zero, if it's less than or equal to zero, then it's a bad loan amount. Okay, the same goes for, oops. Okay, sorry for that pop up. Okay, so if the number of months is incorrect, so that would have to be months has to be less than or equal to zero. These are ORs, by the way, because I'm going to have another condition. Because right now, all this is doing is to check to see if what the user is entering in is negative or zero. Uh, but I also have to check to make sure that it's a float or it's an integer. So I do have a little bit more to, to do. Uh, the interest rate can't be less than or equal to zero. And it has to, I have to check to see if it's a float. And the extra payment, we just have to make sure that it is not less than zero. So extra less than zero. Now it can equal zero because remember the default is equal zero. So I don't have to change that. Okay. So hopefully this makes sense so far. So now what I have to do is I have to check to see if this is a float. And this is the function that I'm going to use to check to see if it is a float. Uh, if you're not familiar with it, uh, you can look it up online. Um, there's plenty of pages that discuss it. So here's what I'm going to do. It's going to be is nan, uh, what do I want to say, is an number loan amount. Okay. So what this is doing is it's going to take the loan amount. It's going to check to see if it's a number. Okay, if it's a number, it's going to return that number. If it's not a number, it's going to return... Okay, so let me just write this out. An example of number of 5.5 .5 is 5.5. .5. Number of 0 is 0. Number of... If you do like negative 1 is negative 1. Number of, say, um, monkey is N-A-N which stands for not a number. Okay, So what happens is the loan amount gets put in. It's going to check to see if it's a number. If it's a number, it will just give you back the number. If it's something else, like a word or a letter, or if it's left blank, it's going to say NAN. And for actually, if it's left blank, it treats it as zero. So we got we got to deal with that. But OK, so we get back something that's a number, or we're going to get back NAN. What this function is doing is checking hey, did this return NAN? Did it return not a number? So if this is true, it means the loan amount was not a number, right? Because like number of number monkey is NAN because monkey is not a number. So if it is not a number, come in here, tell me that it, I have to enter in something valid and then that's it. So that's what we'll use to check to see if you are a float. Okay, so let me put this right here is n a n number checks to see if the user entered a float okay so let's do that with the interest rate and the extra monthly payment extra okay so far so good all right so now for integers how do we check to see if something is an integer uh, the way that I do it and this can be done a couple different ways but this is just the way that I'm I'm used to doing it 
All right, I'm, let me write it out and then I'll I'll talk about it. Parse int enter your variable months if that does not equal months. Okay, so let me talk about this for a second. Parse int what it does is it takes a look at the variable if it's an integer it will um, kind of like what number did if it's an integer it will give you back the integer so uh, parse int of 5 is 5 now if you do parse int of 5.5 5, it'll give you back 5 so if it's not an integer a float it will just take the integer version of your float um, so parse int of like 0 0.1 should be 0 because it's just going to take the integer version of it. Now parse int of say a word like monkey is hopefully if you understood what was going on up here it's going to re return an an not a number. Okay. All right. Well, we don't actually have to use the the is not a number function because just because of the way that I have it set up here. Okay, parse int of uh, months, it's going to give you back the integer version of it. Now, if that equals what originally was set in months, then it truly was an integer. For example, if I enter in parse, say, okay, um, say months equals 5.5, then parse int of 5.5 equals 5. But what's months? Well, that was 5.5. So does 5.5 equal 5? No, it does not equal. And so that this entire statement here would actually be true, and it would come in here and tell me that it's not a valid number of months. Okay, so it's a, it's kind of backwards. So if you do not enter in so something that is an integer, this is going to tell me it's not an integer. And it's going to come in here and say, please enter in a valid number of months. Okay, so like if uh, months equals monkey then parse int of months equals nan but months equals monkey so clearly these these two do not equal each other so it's going to come in here and say nope this these don't equal each other so this statement here is true please enter in a valid of months valid number of months so that is the logic behind this. What I'm going to do is once a user comes in, we find out that they didn't enter in something valid. We're going to do we're going to do like a reset. Document loan form loan amount va value equals. So it's kind of like the start over. If a user doesn't enter in something that's correct or valid, we're just going to set it back to the default state which in this case most of these is just blank. Let me do that again for the interest rate. And for the extra payment. Now remember for the extra payment the default state is actually 0. All right, so I think we're good. Um I actually do want to throw a return false in these. Okay, after a while of trying to figure out where I had an error, which I did, um, I did not close off the parentheses for the if statement for the interest rate. So once you've done that, uh, I think I was going to be I was going to put return falses in here. I don't really think I need to. Um, so as as of right now, this should work. Um, you can check it out. I'm going to do it one more time and go through some of them. But uh, since we're running out of time, I'm just going to assume everything is good. So right now, if I press calculate, it's going to, well, I had a, that was my test here. Uh, please en enter in a valid loan amount. And so it clears it out to make room for my new one. So if I do, say, like 180,000, if I press calculate, it will probably say hi because i got to take that alert out. But then it will say, please enter in a valid number of months. So that's good. So once I put in a valid number of months, an interest rate, and so on, when I calculate, it will say validation complete. And then I can now write the script for the loan info section.